strap yourself in, because today on Made in Virginia, you're in for a G-Force inducing, edge of your seat experience. The Tanum Invader, a beastly yet nimble machine made to go fast, handle perfectly, and put Virginia on the map for manufacturing world-class excitement. And it's made right here in Virginia. Made in Virginia is brought to you by At Union Bank and Trust, we salute the dreamers, the thinkers, the doers, the believers, the builders, and the makers. Thanks to your vision, hard work, and innovation, you make Virginia shine. Union Bank and Trust, a partner of Virginia business and a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting. just investing in your future, you're giving your memories a place to call home. Old Dominion Realty, a proud supporter of Made in Virginia. T-Mike, honoring Virginia's manufacturing heritage and proudly supporting Made in Virginia. T-Mike, we drive industry. And a very special thanks to Made in Virginia supporters the Woodrow Wilson Presidential Library and Museum in Stanton, Virginia. A truly unique Made in Virginia experience. The Greater Augusta Regional Chamber of Commerce, a partner for success. And the Law Offices of Allen and Carwile. Motors, based in Culpeper, Virginia, designs and manufactures three-wheeled reverse trikes. The Tanum Invader is the company's flagship product. The Invader is designed for motorsports enthusiasts or those who wish to experience the thrill of a high-speed motorbike with the added safety and control of an enclosed chassis three-wheel design. And it's made right here in Virginia. At one point back in 2009, there was a conversation between me and another guy that talked about, you know, the reverse trike concept and, you know, that that market really hadn't been fully evolved, you know, and we talked about different scenarios with kit versions and, and um, different types of ways to get it to the market, but ultimately, you know, I wanted something that was fully manufactured with all the possibilities of uh, performance items that could be added to it in a manufacturing process. So in 2009, you know, I decided to take the leap in a concept and we hired a designer that was able to put down on paper what my thoughts were um, and ultimately went to building a prototype. Three-wheel vehicles in general have become very popular over the last eight or ten years. They've been around since motor vehicles have been around, so it's not like a new concept. But the popularity really started to increase about eight years ago when Bombardier introduced the Can-Am Spider, which I think you see a lot of them on the road today. In fact, I read where they just sold their 100,000th vehicle last March after, I think, eight years. Um, and again, they've seen a lot of popularity, and then Polaris just introduced a slingshot about six months ago, I think, that's uh, having quite a bit of popularity. Using the Suzuki Hayabusa motor as the power plant platform, you, you basically were able to have that motorcycle sound and, and experience uh, that you might get on a two-wheel motorcycle or a sport bike. The fact that the cockpit is open and you get a lot of air movement and you can feel the, the, the air and the sound and, and see all the things that are going on around you like you would on a motorcycle. Um, I really felt like the first time we drove it, it was clearly something that 
was a blend of what we were trying to accomplish between the stability of an automobile and the performance and feel of a motorcycle. The Tandem Invader, it's been a process. Um, it's one of the most fun projects I've ever worked on in my life. I love coming to work. Um, it's exciting. I love to see the public reaction behind the product. But we developed a product that I think everybody that's into motorsports is just going to love. Well, we, we find there's actually four groups of people that are really interested in the Invader. Uh, one is baby boomers like myself. Uh, some of the baby boomers who've never thought about a two-wheel motorcycle because of the balance and stability issues and, and safety that they've always had concerns. But because this drives like an automobile, it's, it's interesting to them and, and they feel much more comfortable. Uh, some baby boomers who have been on two-wheel motorcycles all their life, particularly the larger bikes, uh, because of either age or perhaps physical problems they're starting to develop as they're getting older, they don't feel comfortable on a two-wheel bike anymore. But they want the excitement and that open-air experience and the sound that goes with a motorcycle. So we find those. Women, for a very similar reason, a lot of women uh, not comfortable on a two-wheel motorcycle because of the strength uh, issues, to, particularly the larger motorcycles. But here they, they're they very comfortable because it drives like a car. Um, performance people, this is a high performance vehicle. Uh, the 200 horsepower Hayabusa, depending on the gearing package we put on it, the 135 to 160 on the top end, zero to 60 in three and a half to four seconds. Not something you do on the highway, but we take invaders up to the track at Summit Point and raceways and, and on track days, and they're just a blast to drive up there and, and really take advantage of that performance. Uh, one final group that's not a big group, but it's an important group. Uh, my background's a defense contractor, and I've been a veteran, but we, our dealers are hearing from uh, a lot of uh, uh, veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan missing limbs that are looking for something that they could have some fun with too and be adapted for their use. The concept of making something a little bit edgier to give the, the consumer um, the feel of a motorcycle, uh, the exhilaration of a motorcycle, but the stability of an automobile or a sports car uh, was the goal. Um, and I think we achieved that with the Invader. The Tana Motors Invader is a very complex machine. It's got over 400 individual parts that come together. Uh, it starts with a chassis, and the chassis we do manufacture uh, through a supplier in, in North Carolina. It's a very complicated chassis because we attach 26 body panels to an Invader and to get the fit and finish that you are used to seeing in an automobile. Uh, when the Invader's finished, you don't see the chassis. It's totally enclosed, and it's more like getting into a sports car than uh, what you would typically think of in a three-wheel vehicle. We start our manufacturing process by disassembling stock Suzuki motorcycles. And the reason why is with Suzuki, we have a very good relationship with Suzuki. With their U.S. dealer agreements, they can only sell through dealers, so they will not sell us just the motor and transmission that we want to use. So we buy a stock Suzuki motorcycle from a dealer, take it apart. The parts we don't use, we sell through the internet on the open market. There's so many Suzuki motorcycles out there. There's always a demand for, for replacement parts. The process begins by disassembling a stock Suzuki motorcycle. First, the seat is removed. Next, the four bolts that hold the gas tank in place are extracted. The fairing and other plastic body parts are removed. Two bolts on each side of the nose clip are taken out, releasing the windshield and mirrors. The front tire and triple tree fork are removed. The subframe is dropped. Once fully exposed, the Hayabusa motor is removed and transferred to a hydraulic lift. The Hayabusa motor is then modified with a Brox Performance clutch, an alternator package, and an electronic control unit, or ECU, are added. We use the Suzuki Hayabusa motor. It's a motorcycle motor, obviously. Arguably one of the most powerful motors in existence today. It's also been around for 18 years. We selected it because it's a bulletproof motor. It's, it's very durable and has wonderful 
track record in terms of performance and, and not breaking down. The Suzuki Hayabusa, yeah, um, absolutely love that motor, love it. It's so turbo friendly, they're bulletproof, you can run these things hard, and we have. We've brought them to the track, even with the extra weight of the vehicle, it just performs like nothing I've ever been in, quite honestly. It really does. It gives you such an exhilarating ride in your seating position in the car. It's so low, you just feel like you're flying. Once the modifications are completed, the Hayabusa is tagged and placed on the assembly line, ready for installation. The powder coating process begins with each part getting a phosphoric acid wash. The parts are then baked in a large industrial oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. The chassis, once removed from the oven, has a ground wire attached, creating an overall negative charge. A rod in the powder gun sprayer creates a positive charge on the powder. The positively charged powder is attracted to the surface of the negatively charged chassis, which is sprayed by hand on the entire surface. Tanum uses a wrinkle finish black powder that creates a durable, highly rust resistant surface. Other parts on the Invader are also powder coated, like wheel hubs and A arms. The raw chassis is fitted with 26 body parts, which are fit seam to seam to a tolerance of 1 16th of an inch. Once an exact fit is achieved, each body part is given two coats of primer, two coats of color paint, and two clear coats. The body parts are then polished to a high luster glass-like finish. Tanum offers white, black, gray, red, yellow, or blue, but customers can opt for any color they wish. The motor is placed on a hydraulic lift, jacked into place, and mounted to the chassis with eight bolts. Tanum pre-assembles the A-arms on a specialized hydraulic cart. The A-arm assemblies are jacked into place and attached with four bolts. The assembly is completed with the fifth and final shock bolt. The front tires are 225 by 35 and mounted on an 18-inch rim. Each completed wheel assembly is then road force balanced. Tanum also pre-assembles the swing arm on a hydraulic cart, attaching the 18-inch rear tire to a three-part 20-inch rim. The swing arm is set in place and attached with a 25 millimeter by 62 centimeter axle. High-performance braking systems are used. The Invader will accelerate from 0 to 60 in just under 4 seconds and brake from 60 to 0 in 3.5 seconds. The pedal assembly is completed with the brake cam switch, master cylinder, clutch master cylinder, and attached securely to the chassis with 8 bolts. The steering rack is mounted and attached to the front end assemblies with 7 bolts. The drive chain is cut to length and prepped for installation. Just like a bicycle or motorcycle, the power from the motor is transferred through the chain to the rear tire. The nerve center of the Invader is the custom wiring harness. The wiring harness is laid out on a full-scale street map-like board that assures proper distance and fit. Each wire is made up individually with pins and seals, and each of these assemblies are fit into a connection housing that will ultimately attach to the Invader's electronic components, switches, and relays. Once completed, the wiring harness is ready to go into the Invader. The harness is fed from the nose to the rear, directed, hung, and attached to each component part. Here, the instrument cluster is attached.
the lights, switches, and system indicators are attached. And finally, the battery. Followed by the side-by-side -side seats and seat belts. The steering wheel has a quick-release snap fitting for ease of placement and removal. The headliner is put into place and bolted to the chassis. The chimsel or center high mount stop and dome lights are attached. The exterior roof panel is attached. Followed by the nose clip exterior front end and the rest of the exterior body panels. The concept of making something a little bit edgier to give the, the consumer um, the feel of a motorcycle, uh, the exhilaration of a motorcycle, but the stability of an automobile or a sports car uh, was the goal. Um, and I think we achieved that with the Invader. What was really amazing, um, besides the performance aspect and the you know, acceleration, but the handling of the vehicle really makes a difference. Uh, it, it actually even shocked me as we got through the process as to how uh, the weight distribution worked out very well at 500 pounds roughly a wheel. So it was very balanced as you would move through turns, um, very stable. There wasn't a lot of body roll or anything like that. Um, and we, we felt like it really turned out well. Yeah, I, I really enjoy taking people for rides in them. 95% uh, of the people I give a ride, about three to five minutes into it, the first comment is almost always, I can't believe how smooth this rides. It, it does ride like a really high quality sports car. It's, it's, it's not bumpy, it handles very well, and, and it's just fun. So that people, I think, are not expecting it. I think they're expecting a, a more motorcycle, two-wheel motorcycle type ride of uh, suspension and things like that. And the, the sound is always something that's commented on. The same thing that I, I said that I really enjoy with it, everybody enjoys the, just the, the sound of the motor and the feel of the open air. So the motorcycle experience part of a, of a three-wheel vehicle comes to the forefront. I have the, the Bronx exhaust, so I love the sound of the exhaust. Um, but for me, it's the acceleration. Um, it gets up and just moves super fast. To me, that's the main thing. That and the looks of the car are my two main features. It handles unbelievable, but when you nail that throttle and it pins you to the seat and you get those goosebumps up in your arm and you can hear the RPMs through that exhaust, that's what does it for me. Many of the people, that, of the 18 people that we have working here have been with us pretty much since the beginning, and the beginning is over six years ago. It's been quite a journey to develop from scratch a concept a vehicle as complex as the Invader and then take it through all the federal testing and that's the NHTSA testing, the National Highway Traffic or Safety Administration and the EPA testing and that's rather extensive and uh, we're very fortunate to have the workforce that we have and, and they're dedicated and, and believers in this product as we've taken it through this, this journey of ours. We're very lucky here at Tandem because, you know, we have a lot of really great employees um, that have taken a lot of pride in what they do every day. Um, we have Terry Holloway here that uh, heads up the electrical you know, department that, uh, that does wiring harness and all the electrical controls on the, on the vehicle. Um, we have um, a great paint department that focuses on you know the quality that we try to put on and the fit and finish in every vehicle. Um, Chris Hall, uh, who happens to be my brother, runs the plant, so we feel really great you know about the people that we have here that you know are from the Virginia area working in the plant every day. I've been really lucky as far as the workforce. The guys I have here, we don't have a big turnover rate. The guys we get in here know their job, they love their job, they're excited to come here and be on the opening of this project, and uh, it's cutting edge for everybody. Nobody around the Culpeper area seems to grasp 
what we're doing yet until they see the car and then more and more people are just blown away by it. So as far as my workforce, these guys, again, I don't have a big turnover. They love their job. They come here. They're excited every day. Not that every day's gravy. We have our challenges, believe me. But overall, the guys have been top notch. The employees that we have here are primarily from Virginia. Um, we have a couple people outside of the state, but most, for the most part, everybody that works here is from the general Northern Virginia area. And uh, we've been very successful at procuring those employees here and feel great about the fact that uh, we have great employees that came from Virginia. Well, when we started a little over six years ago, we actually was thinking Detroit, um, you know, particularly six years ago when the, that region was so depressed and we thought there'd be a lot of excess capacity out there. But as we got closer to actually uh, starting to assemble vehicles for production and testing, uh, we decided we really, we live in Virginia and uh, we wanted to have our facility closer to where we live. Turned out to be uh, just an excellent idea for, for many reasons. The labor force has been very supportive, but uh, we also had to, uh, our manufacturing process is a little unusual, and uh, we needed the assistance of the state to change some code in the DMV to manufacture, and they were totally supportive of what we wanted to do. And all the support we got out of our legislators up there, they actually passed the law to change that code unanimously, so you don't see the the political infighting, at least we haven't seen it at the Virginia state level that, that we observe at the national level for sure in terms of people working together to do the right thing and bring business to Virginia. It's very supportive. Well, you know, Culpepper, it was something that evolved over a little bit of time. Initially, we were going to do some of this in Detroit where most people would think that you, you would head in that direction. Um, but we didn't have really good luck in Detroit, and we, we really wanted to come back to Virginia um, and um, do the manufacturing here where we, we're from Virginia. So it really made sense for us to bring the facility here um, so that we could watch the day-to-day -day operations close. You know, my main office is within two miles from here. And so Virginia was very open to working with us and facilitating manufacturing in Virginia. Um, they made it really easy to go through some of the processes that we needed to go through. Uh, but overall, we're really happy to be here. You know, uh, it was the right move for us. The town of Culpeper has been so welcoming and so easy to work with. The police department, the county commissioner, the town as far as inspections for the building and our paint booths, everything has been so easy to get through and work with these guys. It's just been a pleasure. The community's been great. Um, it, I think, it again, a lot of people were shocked that something like this would be going on in Culpeper, Virginia. And it's funny the reaction sometimes you get as you're driving into the local areas, whether it's in Fredericksburg or Richmond, and someone would ask you, you know, where is this made? And they're expecting somewhere else other than Culpeper, Virginia. Um, so there's a lot of shock and, and like, wow, I can't believe that. Um, but, it, you know, it, it's been very positive. The, the impact to the community and the response that we have been getting has been very positive. They're just blown away that something is being developed like this so cutting edge in Culpeper, Virginia. Because it's not a big town. We're not on the map, but Tandem's putting us there. Um, Again, the public reaction to this vehicle is what does it for me. You go out and instantly, if you're in traffic, you see nothing but frowns. They see the car, that frown turns around, people are smiling, taking pictures of the car. They're just so blown away in this little country town that this is being developed here and not out in California or in Detroit. The Tanum Invader is not the first automobile to be made in Virginia. Even before Virginia really had any automobile-worthy roads, automobiles were being made in Virginia with six producers prior to 1923. But the Dawson was Virginia's first. Built 21 years earlier in 1901 in what was then Basic City, now Waynesboro, the Dawson claimed speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. So, just how was the Dawson's engine powered back in 1901? Was it A. Gasoline, B. Electric batteries, or C. Steam? The answer, right after this. 
Made in Virginia is brought to you by... At Union Bank and Trust, we salute the dreamers, the thinkers, the doers, the believers, the builders, and the makers. Thanks to your vision, hard work, and innovation, you make Virginia shine. Union Bank and Trust, a partner of Virginia business and a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting. just investing in your future, you're giving your memories a place to call home. Old Dominion Realty, a proud supporter of Made in Virginia. T-Mike, honoring Virginia's manufacturing heritage and proudly supporting Made in Virginia. T-Mike, we drive industry. And a very special thanks to Made in Virginia supporters the Woodrow Wilson Presidential Library and Museum in Stanton, Virginia. A truly unique Made in Virginia experience. The Greater Augusta Regional Chamber of Commerce, a partner for success. And the Law Offices of Allen and Carwile. The answer, steam. The first automobile made in Virginia was the Dawson Steam Automobile, built in what is now Waynesboro in 1901. Tana Motors in Culpeper continues Virginia's automobile manufacturing heritage, and unlike the Dawson, the Invader goes from zero to 60 in four seconds, and depending on the gearing, has a top speed of 160 miles per hour. Next time on Made in Virginia, it's all about peanuts. Find out why Virginia peanuts are considered the best and most delicious in the world. Experience firsthand how Virginia peanuts are grown, harvested, processed, and brought to market. Just what is a peanut? A root or a nut? Hey, get your peanuts here next time on Made in Virginia. If you would like to learn more about today's episode or suggest a Virginia manufacturer for the program, you may visit us at madeinvirginia.tv and at wvpt.net.